We all know that most Formula 1 Grand Prix are won from somewhere near the front of the grid, but every now and again we get one of those special races where a charge through the pack results in victory. On just 23 occasions in the Formula 1 World Championship history, which is more than a thousand races, a driver's won from outside the top 10 on the grid. The most recent was Lewis Hamilton's victory in the 2018 German Grand Prix, but he's not the record holder. The record is held by someone who raced three decades earlier. This is a short view back to the past on how John Watson won from 22nd on the grid. Gentlemen, a short view back to the past. John Watson had previous when it came to winning from a long way down the grid. He'd won the 1982 Belgian Grand Prix from 10th and the 1982 Detroit Grand Prix from 17th. But his performance at Long Beach in 1983 beggars belief. McLaren Geo, Nicky Lauda and Watson qualified 22nd and 23rd on the grid for the 1983 Long Beach Grand Prix. They were four seconds off the pole time set by Patrick Tombay's Ferrari. Now this wasn't entirely just down to the car. There was a tyre war going on and McLaren were on Michelins. The Goodyear qualifiers were superior that weekend, but McLaren had an additional problem. Many of the front running Michelin cars were turbocharged. McLaren still ran the Cosworth normally aspirated engine, so struggled to generate heat into the tyres. They had no grip and understeer, and Watson and Lauda complained all throughout practice that cars weren't working properly. Race day, however, was another matter. Temperatures were much higher for the Grand Prix, which helped the Michelin runners, and in particular the McLaren duo. Watson gained two places on the opening lap, and Lauda made his way past his teammate on lap four, and the duo then moved through together. There was some unreliability and a few driver mistakes further up the field that also helped them, but the two of them did a lot of overtaking. The McLarens were already running as quickly as the leaders when it all kicked off up front. Keke Rosberg, who had been challenging Patrick Tombay for the lead throughout the race, dived down the inside into the final hairpin. Tombay didn't see him coming, or didn't give him enough room. Rosberg was out of control and under braking anyway, and the inevitable happened. The Ferrari ended up on two wheels and out of the race. Rosberg continued, but was then challenged by his own Williams teammate, Jacques Lafitte. They managed to have contact, and then Jean-Pierre Jarier's Ligier hit Rosberg from behind. That put those two cars out, so immediately we've lost three of the front-running cars. The two McLarens were already in the process of dealing with Danny Sullivan's Tyrrell and Mark Sewer's Arrows, and suddenly they were up to third and fourth, and this is before we're getting anywhere near half distance. Now came a crucial part of the race. Watson had chosen the older Michelin spec rubber, louder than newer. It became clear during the race that maybe Watson had made the correct choice, and he closed up on his then double world champion teammate. On lap 33, Watson made his move and overtook Lauda with a little lock-up into the first corner. Both McLarens now charged up towards the back of the two leaders, Lafitte's Williams and Ricardo Patrese's Brabham BMW. With Watson looming in his mirrors, Patrese's efforts to get the lead became a little more enthusiastic, and he ended up going down the escape road and giving position to both McLarens, second and third. Watson was already regarded as one of F1's finest overtakers. With those two wins I mentioned earlier, how can he not be? On lap 45, with Lafitte struggling with his good years, Watson picked up the slipstream down Seaside Way. He left his move to the last minute and then slotted neatly down the inside of the Williams to take a lead he would never lose. Loud followed almost immediately in a McLaren 1-2, but on this day, he had no answer to his teammate. Suffering from crash and with the new Michelin tyre not working as well as Watson's old one, he just had to watch his teammate drive away at the front of the field. Watson eventually took the flag a remarkable 28 seconds clear. So not only did he win from 22nd on the grid, it was a pretty dominant win as well. Now, the pace of the Michelin rubber on race day was clearly one of the key factors in Watson's win. But the rest of the top six outside of the two McLarens were Goodyear shot, so it wasn't just down to the tyres. Watson was a brilliant street fighter and was an excellent overtaker. It was the last of his five Grand Prix wins. He would never taste success again. But given that the current F1 field is unlikely to top 20 cars for at least another couple of years, Watson Watson is likely to hold on to this record for some time to come, four decades after he took that win. Sadly, that was the last time that F1 went to Long Beach, but you can still enjoy the event because it's now one of the most prestigious races on the IndyCar calendar. With more US races joining the F1 calendar in Miami this year and Las Vegas in 2023, hopefully we'll have some races that can rival the 1983 Long Beach Grand Prix as one of the most remarkable races in World Championship history. If you like the video, please remember to click the like button and subscribe. And you can also let us know if there's an idea you've got for another episode of A Short View Back to the Past.